In this video, we will learn how to conduct the node voltage analysis for cases that involve the use of supernodes. So when do we use a supernode? Supernodes are used when the circuit has an ungrounded voltage source, and this is because we cannot use Ohm's law to describe the currents flowing through the sources. We can obtain another equation from the difference of the source's two terminals. How do we identify a supernode? A supernode will look like a bubble that contains the voltage source and its two terminals. These two terminals are considered as two individual nodes. After identifying the supernode, we will have to write a single KCL equation for the supernode, showing currents entering and leaving the bubble at the terminals. So in this example, we see a voltage source here and we will surround it and its two terminals with a bubble. This bubble is the supernode. We assign the currents like this and we will write the KCL equation for the supernode. So the sum of currents leaving the node is equal to the sum of currents entering the node. Remember that these currents will be expressed as delta V over R. Let's learn how to use these concepts in an example. In this question, we're asked to find the node voltages V1, V2, and V3. So the first step to take is to identify the nodes correctly. First of all, we have this node here, which can be drawn like this. Or alternatively, we can identify the node as this entire segment. Now this is valid because there are no devices within this segment. So that means there's no voltage change and hence that entire segment is characterized by one node voltage value which is, happens to be V1. V2 is identified to be this little bubble. V3 can be written as this bubble or it can be drawn as this entire segment just like V1. And for the bottom node, we could have it like this, or we can have it as the entire segment. Again, this is because there are no devices within here, so there's no voltage change, and that whole segment can be characterized by one voltage value, which happens to be zero because it's connected to ground. Now we can start to write the KCL equation for each node. Starting at KCL for the node 1, Remember that KCL states that the currents entering the node must equal to the currents leaving the node. So we have to identify the currents entering and leaving node 1. Here we don't know what these branch currents are directed to, so we'll just assume that they move outwards. Move out like this and like this. So the currents leaving the node will be equal to the 2 amperes given by the current source plus the two currents leaving the node through the resistors. So currents leaving through the resistors are expressed as delta V over R. And so we must use the formula for delta V, we must use the formula V start minus V end. And what does that mean? V start is the node voltage where it starts and V end is the node voltage where it ends. So for the top current, this means that it starts at V1 and ends at V3. So V start minus V N will be given by V1 minus V3. So it's V1 minus V3 over 2 ohms. This 2 ohms refers to this 2 ohms right here. Now looking at this current over here, we have plus V1 minus V2 over 2 ohms. Because V start, which it starts at V1, and minus Vn, which is ends at V2, over the 2 ohms, which is this 2 ohms right here, equals to the currents entering the node happens to be 0 because there are no currents directed into the node. So now we will simplify this.
And now we move on to write our next KCL equation. Now this is the tricky bit. Now it might be tempting to write a KCL equation at V2, but the problem is V2 is directly connected to this voltage source. And remember, we cannot write, we cannot express the current through a voltage source using Ohm's law. So what we must do is use a supernode that captures the voltage source and its two terminals that it's connected to. So we would draw a bubble around the voltage source and its two terminals here. Remember how I said that we can draw the node voltage V3 like this, so we will reduce it back to this little bubble, it's just for clarity's sake. So what we will do now is to write KCL for the entire super node. Yes, we will write all the currents entering and leaving the node at the two terminals for the entire bubble. So this is what I mean. So KCL super node. So currents entering the node must equal to the currents leaving the node. In this problem, we don't know where the branch currents are directed to, so we'll just assume they move out. Move out, move out, move out, and move out. So looking at this current, we have V2 minus V1 over 2 plus this current v3 minus v1 over 2 plus this current v2 minus 0 over 4 plus this current v3 minus 0 over 3 ohms equals to the currents entering the node which happens to be nothing which is equal to 0 Simplifying, we get this equation. The last equation we want to write has to do with the voltage source itself. So when you observe the voltage source, remember that a voltage source determines the difference in potential of its two terminals. And by that definition, we can create another equation. So looking at the terminals, the positive terminal is V3, and the negative terminal is V2. So that means V3 has a higher voltage value than V2. And so what this says that is V3 minus V2 gives us 3 volts because the voltage source has a value of 3 volts. And yes, the terminals do matter. So plus comes first. So it's plus first subtracted away by the minus terminal. So we have our three equations. One, two, and three. I'll put this in a matrix form. We can punch this into our calculator. And we should be able to get the answers. V1 being 5 point, minus 5.64 volts, V2 being minus 5.14 volts, and V3 being negative 2.14 volts. In the next video, we will learn how to conduct circuit analysis using the mesh current method.